Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a cover for this boring uh, notebook. It's an A4 sized notebook, uh, as you can see, and it's going to be <laughs> the easiest cover you will ever uh, encountered. Uh, you can do all kinds of covers and textures on a hard cover, but uh, what I'm doing today is the easiest at least I think. I'm going to take this masking tape. This is from the hardware aisle in the chip store. And I'm going to create texture on this uh, cover. And you can go about it with lots of texture or less texture, however you want. And you can decide on the direction you want the texture. I'm go just going to start here. And I want to... Uh, it to go around the edge so I'm starting here and I'm just making wrinkles like so and I'm leaving it um, here so I can wrap it around the edge like so now, why is this the easiest? Because it's already got it adhesive. I can play with the texture how, however I want. More wrinkles, less wrinkles. And you don't have to deal with all kinds of uh, glue and water that can make your cover a get some let's say a curve because there you can do all kinds of uh, textures like this with uh, paper towels with paper napkins i'm just going around and here where i have the spine i will cut it later Right now I'm just going and putting it around the edge and I can just take it out with just rip it. Okay, so very easy. <laughs> I just can't find it. Here it is. So now I've got texture and I don't have to deal with wet stuff that can make some curve to my uh, cover and also if you have a uh, lot of times the in uh, notebooks like this with hardcover are glossy and if you are not doing something like this with adhesive then you need to sand it down a little bit so that's another a uh, thing that uh, now i don't need to deal with so as you can see i'm just laying it down however and just creating wrinkles very easy nothing to it And I can also decide that if I don't like one part, I can put another piece of masking tape on top and create more texture. So even if you don't like some, some of it, you can just go and make another layer until you like what you have. So it's very easy and I know that at, at first it looks like a mess, but afterwards it will pay off. And I like to work with small pieces. It gives me a little bit more a uh, control on the outcome. But if you want, you can do larger pieces up to you. Another way to go about it is again, hardware aisle. Uh, this, there is this kind of, um, I don't know what to call it. Uh, aluminum uh, with adhesive in the back 
and you can go around and stick it also this will give you a more subtle texture but I wanted to go with um, something a little bit more bold and that's why I'm using this just want a lot of texture and I'm just pushing it down here where I have the fold just so it won't be in the air and I won't have air bubbles underneath that's it so what I have to do now is just continue covering the whole cover that's it very easy like so and flattening it okay so I'm going to continue uh, putting down the masking tape all over just uh, make sure that the masking tape uh, is with um, is like paper on top not a uh, plastic there are all kinds of tapes out there in the hardware store and some of them are glossy and plus like plastic on the outside that's what's great about this that it's almost like paper and you can work on it with paint and it's very easy so i'll be back when everything is covered okay so finished covering uh, the whole uh, notebook and another thing if you don't like some of the texture again you can put another uh, piece on top if you have too much of uh, wrinkles like if i don't like this piece for example that it goes like this i can always take another small piece of masking tape and just glue it like so so you can always just fix and Put whatever you want on top and make more wrinkles or less however you want now the only thing I've done is just I went like this just to flatten everything and that's it now I'm going to start a painting this and I'm starting dark a, with this kind of well with texture and uh, you start with the dark uh, paint and then you build on top of it so i've got some a uh, black acrylic paint here i will need a lot of it and i've got some very dark blue you probably won't see a uh, a lot of difference in between but there is a difference and I've got another dark blue, but mostly it's going to be very, very dark. So I really don't care. I just don't want it to be a uh, too much of a flat color uh, in the back. For this kind of texture, again, I am going to take a, a brush that is is soft but uh, still stiff so i can get into all this uh, texture now you want to protect the pages uh, that you have of the no notebook i'm just uh, holding it like this i'm putting the black uh, in the edges of my uh, notebook and i'm going to put the blue towards the inside i can also I just open the notebook and that's how I won't put paint on the inside now when I'm finished and everything will be dry then I will go and do whatever I have on the inside and later on I will show you how everything is tucked nicely in and no one will see the masking tape Right now, I'm just putting the black 
like so and just going into all the wrinkles I've got like so and now I'm switching to the bl uh, the darker blue letting them mix and sometimes because you've got the light color masking tape it shows through and it depends on the quality of the acrylic paint sometimes you will need another coat like I, I already see that I will need another coat here I don't care now I'm just covering first layer of this uh, texture and I like working uh, with this quite quickly because that's how while well, the black is still wet and I'm applying the blue it mixes and it blends together nicely but it's not that critical okay switching to the other blue You need to go in all directions so the paint will cover all the wrinkles from all the sides. I think even the black will need another coat. Everything will need another coat. Well, so I'm just moving on, just covering. And of course, if you've got a... Um, if you've got black gesso, you can do first black gesso and then paint, but I don't uh, like too much the black gesso. I don't know why, so I prefer to do two coats of acrylic paint and not deal with the black gesso, at least not on this uh, very simple project, So, but it's really up to you. Black gesso is also not as accessible and it's not cheap, so I prefer to use it only when I really have to. Okay. Going over. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to do a second coat and only then I'll be back for the next phase of this transformation. I'll be back. Okay, so I uh, finished coloring uh, the cover and now I want to add more uh, blue to it. I hope you can see there is difference in the color between the black and the dark blue I've taken another shade of blue lighter one and I'm mixing it with the darker one just so I will be have a shade in between and I'm not sure about this but I'm going to start applying it very lightly and if I don't like it I can cover it again with the colors I've got now I'm taking this kind of sponge because I don't want to cover everything I just want to add a hint of this now I'm just dabbing it so I will have a small amount and I'm hoping to just add in some places The lighter uh, color I think I should have gone with a smaller sponge so it will get in between all the creases I've got okay again here this is really playing and 
having fun with all kinds of colors and just remember that if you don't like something you can just uh, go on top of it and cover it with whatever you want so have fun with it look how it turns out I think I need more of the darker blue so I'm putting it here and I'm going on top of areas that are too much of the lighter uh, shade as I said just playing with what I've got here I can also take a little black and again just let them mix and have all kinds of shades in between okay I like it so I'm leaving it be this needs to be a uh, completely dry before I continue so I'm going to put it aside I'm we are going to work now on my focal point for this that is going to be at the front of the notebook so I bought this hideous uh, earrings hideous earrings are great for a uh, focal points and all kinds of interesting texture on all, all kinds of stuff that you want to uh, alter if it's a box if it's a notebook whatever and I'm just going to take out this it's good that it's just thin metal and that's going to be part of the focal point and I have this glass a flat back a stone this is a, from the cheap store it's supposed to be for um, <laughs> a aquariums and I buy it and do all kinds of stuff with so for this I want a piece of white paper which I'm going to bring now I had some don't know where I <laughs> put it okay so let's start I've got this and now I'm taking a pencil and I'm tracing approximately around my stone and now I want to put some color and I'm going to use um, I'm going to use uh, nail polish I th in some shades of blue and maybe glitter I'm not sure completely well let's take some so I've got all kinds and no this is I thought it was another color but it looks like Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, oh, it's almost dry. Never mind. Let's see. I want several colors. Never one solid color it's not interesting otherwise oops too much of course you can put any color you want but I think it's just easier with nail polish and if I want glitter it's better be inside the nail polish and so I won't have to deal with how it goes everywhere I'm looking to see if I've got something else that can be used I've got this nail polish 
maybe if I'll mix it, it would be more interesting. I'm still going to try to put this one. Basically, I'm playing until I've got something that will look interesting underneath the glass stone. And if I don't like it, I can do another one. Let's see, I'm not putting it yet because it's uh, still wet and I'm going to let this dry. I'm still planning on doing uh, something on top of it. And now for this earring, I am going to cover it with black gesso. Let's take a brush. Oh great, this black gesso is dry. Maybe I've got another one. Okay, so covering Real Creek. So I've got a uh, two more or three more metal bits that I want to put on my cover. So I'm going to uh, do them also with black gesso. Here we go. I've got this for the corners. And maybe, I'm not sure yet, maybe I'll put this one that looks like a handle. And so, just going in inside all the nooks and crannies covering all now if I wanted this shade of metal then I would have just left it as is but because I'm planning on some silver uh, highlights that's why I'm covering it in black and later on I will do the silver on top. So I'm just going over this also. And I need to let this dry. Okay, so gesso cover is done. I'm looking to put it so it will dry without all I've done here with all, <laughs> all the mess uh, some are some people can work very clean and very orderly I am not one of them I am making a mess I think it's part of my process <laughs> okay so still wet i'm uh, letting this dry well i'm letting everything dry and i'll be back okay so this is dry i want to give it silver highlight uh, to all a uh, this texture and several ways to go about this a uh, cheapest one is uh, having a acrylic paint silver acrylic paint let's take a little bit i'm gonna put it here and take a sponge it doesn't have to be this uh, like this just dab you want you don't want to have too much of it and you just go lightly so only the ridges will uh, take the silver 
so you won't cover uh, the black now that's a uh, one way to go about it and uh, again depending on the quality of the acrylic paint sometimes you will need to go over once again so it will pick it will be more noticeable next is my uh, this is four <laughs> uh, wax uh, metallic wax and i will put a link below to the video how to make this i've got them several years and they are made from a metallic uh, oil oil pastels with coconut oil so i'm just taking a little bit on my finger and again going over the ridges like so i hope you can see it so that's another way to go about it and this is the expensive one this is just this one is wax paste uh, by paint art there are all kinds of uh, gilding waxes and most of them are just uh, expensive so again just with the finger and going over the ridges so three options to go and do this uh, silver uh, highlights and it, not only here anything that i want to pick and give it a little bit here we go using mine just so you can see it's doable i remember lots of people are asking me uh, if it will go rancid or uh, all kinds of stuff about this and as you can see i've got it for several years and you only need such small amount so it it holds for a lot a long time now it's a very old video and <laughs> i didn't really had the means to melt everything and so i it was very low budget <laughs> but if you have a heat tool you can melt the oil pastels with the heat tool and not like i've done it i went to my kitchen and done it on the stove so just so you will know so here we go uh, we have this now again and the wax this kind <laughs> forgot what i wanted to say okay coconut oil i don't know what is coconut oil in your country here when you buy coconut oil it comes in a jar and it's solid it's not like a vegetable oil it's not like a olive oil it's solid so when i took the oil pastels with a little bit of the coconut oil that's what i had a softer version of the oil pastels so just so you will know okay so i really like what's going on here and now i just need to put it back and let's see what is going on here yes this is dry so i can continue for my next <laughs> crazy id I've got this stamp. This is Finnebear and it's like a crackle stamp. Let's see. I want to take a little bit of black. Let's take the gesso. And I'm going lightly here. Just on top and I'm going to stamp it on top of it. Okay. Still not sure it is going to work and be nice. I don't know. Let's see. Where is my... Yeah, I think it's interesting. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry. And then I'm just going to glue this to the back of my glass stone and then i'm going to assemble 
<laughs> all the stuff I've got here and still I want to add more highlights to my uh, notebook to the cover to all the texture I've got there and if you are using either gesso or acrylic paint on top of a clear stamp wipe it immediately after use you don't want it to dry on your stamp it will ruin it so here we go okay I'll be back back to the cover and I'm going to use the same metallic uh, silver uh, here on top of all the texture very lightly picking up the details of all the creases I'm going a little bit more uh, on the edges of my notebook of my cover but here on the inside I'm going quite lightly just picking up highlights on the ridges and as you can see I'm using my uh, the one that I've made the metallic uh, wax that I made now in if you want to seal it against uh, several I don't really know if you need to seal it but I uh, am um, uh, I rather do some sealant on top than regret later so again several options the, uh, the expensive one is to buy fixative in craft and art shops that's the expensive uh, spray uh, next is just buying clear spray paint like like this and of course spray it outside not on the inside this is the next uh, best thing and I buy it at the cheap store again hardware aisle and the ch more cheap uh, than this is buying hairspray and using it to create a sealant on top of your work so that these are the options I will I didn't try to use any kind of um, no forgot the name <laughs> I'll remember in a minute just doing the spine also going over with the silver I didn't try any varnish, not water-based, not otherwise, so I can't tell you how it works on top of uh, this kind of thing. If you want, you can do an experiment on a little piece and see if it works for you. So, I've got this. Now I want to uh, put some my elements here. So I'm going to use, this is B7000, uh, it's like the E6000. You can use this, you can use silicon glue for metal bits and also if you've got gel medium it also works. I like using it this because it has a very fine uh, opening so it's easier to go and put the glue on all these tiny bits. but really up to you okay I hope that's enough I will put something heavy on top in a minute just so I will to make sure it adheres and that's the stone I put more of the clear nail polish with the glitter so it kind of uh, it made some kind of reaction with the gesso but I still like what is going on here so I'm putting again glue in the back and it goes here now the corner pieces Now 
we still got to do the inside to tuck everything in so it would look nice okay so now I'm I want to uh, add this so I need to make a hole so it will go inside it's like a bread so I need to do a hole for it to go all through my hardcover and I'm just eyeballing the middle let's see I think I want it here so I'm taking this owl or as I like to call it pokey tool and be sure not to put your finger underneath and now let's hope it will get in if not then I will have to use some nail to make it through okay and yay it worked so now I'm just oops not dry yet okay so now I'm just going to open the legs of this bread here okay I'm going to put something heavy just to make sure it uh, stays in place and adheres. I'm going to let the glue set and then I'll come back and we'll do the inside. Okay, so outside is finished. Now inside is very simple. I just uh, painted on the inside here with black where all the masking tape was. Here is the legs of this uh, bread and what I'm going to do is just take some glue, put it on this first page in the notebook, like so, and now I'm closing it just so it would be flat and here we go. Now it's glued right where it should be. very very easy and if you are not sure you can peel it over very quickly and again just put pressure on it make sure it's in place like so and I can show you the back once again done the same thing and it's all tucked in and glued nicely so this is it that's my uh, notebook very easy anyone can do it i hope you liked it thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now